Hello everyone and welcome to this new video series on C Sharp from beginner to pro. And in this video series, this will be the first section that we'll be learning about. So why choose a new language when you have tons of languages out there in the market from Java to Rails from PHP to and everything else. But C Sharp is unique. C Sharp can be used to create diverse Windows application and software that can be run as a component in any other platforms. We can also use C Sharp to create dynamic websites using the ASP.NET library. And obviously these websites are used by GoDaddy.com, Skype.com, NewYorkTimes.com, Telegraph.co.uk and Microsoft.com. C Sharp, by the way, solves many, many of its problems faced by other object-oriented programming languages like Java. It removes the complexities of multiple inheritance macros and uh, virtual base classes that are quite a drawback for Java in these days. But C Sharp is quite simple, modern and easy to use. And the last thing is that it has a rich library, it has a rich .NET framework created by Microsoft that is completely free. It can be used to uh, create routines for file handling, multitasking, manipulating XML and many more exciting stuff and all this for free. Now we were talking about object-oriented programming languages. Object-oriented programming languages have four features in common. The first feature that we are going to talk about is encapsulation. Encapsulation is just like packaging your similar stuff into a single box. Suppose you want to package all your books, all your programming books into a single package, into a single box, then you go on putting all those books into that single box. This is the same way that codes are packaged inside our programs. Codes are packaged inside our programs to protect them from outside security or possible security threats. The next thing that is inheritance. Inheritance is the way that we gain threats from traits from our parents from uh, and our children they gain traits from us like I have black hair as like my parents so inheritance is the way existing codes are expanded to create new functionalities without any way manipulating the previous codes the next thing is the polymorphism which is the capability of representing one single thing in different ways you might call a human being in different ways depending on his relation or her relationship with you like you you might call your brother with uh by his name or with an expression that he understands just like uh, many people call their brothers as bro or their friends as bro so if he's your friend he's your buddy but it's the same thing he's the same human being you're calling him by his name or just by an expression that's what polymorphism is the next thing is the code reusage the next thing that we'll be looking at and the last thing that we'll be looking at code reusage you might have guessed it right that code reusage is the way we create only one single code and we make uh, objects out of it like just like creating classes and making new objects out of it out of the same class this is just like creating a single blueprint for a house and making many other uh, building many other houses out of that single blueprint. To start writing our code, we need to first meet two very basic objectives to set up our system and to make our codes understandable. The first thing that we need is to have an editor. You might choose uh, Sharp Develop, which is an open source that I'll be showing you how to download and install. You might also choose Microsoft's Visual Studio. That's also the very best ones out there in the market, but that's, I think, very expensive. And obviously, the free .NET Framework library from Microsoft. These two things need to be installed on your computer, on your system, so that we can start writing our codes. So let's just now start by downloading them and then I'll show you how to install all of this. So here we are now on Sharp Develops site. This is called icsharpcode.net and we'll start by downloading this Sharp Develop 5 which is the latest release and this only supports C Sharp code and remember that we will also need this Microsoft.NET Framework 4.5.1 to run Sharp Develop and the SourceForge paid page has opened we'll need to wait quite a bit for that save this file in your computer where it's convenient for you to find out 
and the download has started so I'll pause the video right here and I'll come back when it's complete and I'll install it with you so now the download is complete and let's install this first and you'll see that it needs .NET Framework 4.5 to be installed so let's go back there and install it so here we are on the installation f uh, page of microsoft.com let's install this first it's really easy to ins download and install and uh, here we are the prompt is there and uh, save this file in a convenient place so that you can find it out later on it will take some time we have got the installer the dotnet installer that is perhaps bigger than the sharp develop uh, software so now let's install this thing this will take quite a long time so I hope you'll be patient so you'd see this beautifully crafted Microsoft.NET logo this takes quite a bit of time you know for those of you who are impatient it would be wise to know that uh, if you're really a real programmer who knew about all this object oriented stuff you can actually skip this this is really easy to install but those of you who are new to this to this entire programming world then i hope you'd be patient with me we have this open the windows open now and so select this license agreement click install and this will slowly install your pr uh, files but it will also download something that are necessary uh, f by the windows installer all of these things take quite a few bit of time when you have completed your dotnet framework installation you'll find a window that says 4.5.1 has been installed successfully so now let's click finish and for the reason of this we'll have to restart our computer so it would be better if you restart your computer and install sharp develop so now we have a fresh new session after our restart is over and locate the folder where you have kept your sharp develop develop installer and click on it it will appear without any error messages we had faced an error before we installed the dotnet framework so you won't find any sort of errors right now so click next accept the license agreement click next again and browse for the location where you want to keep your new installed newly installed uh, sharp develop I'll be creating a new folder for this sharp develop click OK and if you want other files to be associated choose all of them otherwise these files won't be included perhaps we don't need all of this but if you want them you can this wouldn't take up much space although so after you're done click next and install this wouldn't take much time my install here is almost complete but sharp develop will ask you to learn about some of the dependencies which are small softwares that you may require later so click finish and they'll prompt you to a new browser window so this browser window has some recommendations for you if you want to run Microsoft F sharp or other sorts of uh, softwares you'll need to download all of this but we don't need them right now so let us go back to our sharp develop and let's see how to create a class that we will be building in this lesson series so here we are inside sharp develop we need to first create a class to start our programming experience and I'll step by step explain that after we create it we compile it and we execute it but after we create that class or create that code we need to define a path towards our dotnet framework so that we can compile it using our cmd or command prompt so let us now start by creating a new file that will be an empty file so go to file and choose the new tab and choose an empty file template you don't need to understand all of these templates right now because you, we are just starting up so select this empty file and select create we don't need all of these commands so delete them and we'll be using dotnet system variables and now 
we shall be creating a class called uh, the first class you can name anything you can even name your classes using your name and the code block for the class will start by curly braces so the first curly brace and the last curly brace try to organize your code as uh, as much as possible and try to add more commands as you can because this commands will help you later on when you revisit those codes or when your fellow programmers revisit them so we'll have a method called that will be public and at the same time static this won't return any sort of value it will just be a main method with no parameters and the method which is also a function we'll be discussing about this in the next section of this video series this will have a code block and this will produce this will produce a sys uh, system message this will produce a simple message console right line this right line function will produce or display this is my first class in this video this will produce this message on the screen so let us now save this save this as message one class dot cs don't forget to add this dot cs extension at the end of your file name and save this okay okay now this is now saved now we can't run this from our sharp develop because sharp develop expects us to create solutions which are full-fledged projects and those projects need to have all sorts of classes structs interfaces and namespaces we don't understand all of this right now so we just need to run this class by itself so what can we do we first need to locate our dotnet frameworks dot cse or the compiler to locate our compiler go to start and open up computer go to your local disk and find this windows folder then locate microsoft dot net and you'll also see a framework folder inside this microsoft uh, dot net folder click on it we'll be using the latest version 4.0 and now let's copy this path click on it and click control C 